This is The Top, where I interview entrepreneurs who are number one or number two in their industry in terms of revenue or customer base. You'll learn how much revenue they're making, what their marketing funnel looks like, and how many customers they have. I'm now at $20,000 per talk. Five and six million. He is hell-bent on global domination. We just broke our 100,000 unit soul mark. And I'm your host, Nathan Latka. Okay, Top Tribe, this week's winner of the 100 bucks is Rhett Gillins. He's in the restaurant industry, and he feels stuck. He wants to start his own software business. So congratulations, Rhett, for your guys' chance to win 100 bucks every Monday morning. Simply subscribe to the podcast on iTunes now in order to enter, and then text the word Nathan to 33444 to prove that you subscribed. Many people ask me what tool I used to sell my first company, Heyo. The answer is thetopinbox.com. I used it to send emails, schedule emails to be sent out later, and set reminders inside my inbox so I would know when potential buyers were actually interested, and I easily remember to follow up with ones that hadn't replied to me. You can try it for free at thetopinbox.com. All right, guys, I know a lot of you guys are excited. The holidays are here. Don't forget to just tune into the Top Podcast. You're going to learn so much. It's great for holiday listening. In between Mariah Carey Christmas music or maybe you're a maybe you're a Nat King Cole kind of family, whatever it is, also tune in to the Top. We've got Smear tomorrow morning. His company, Get Accept, has hit 50, 44 grand in monthly recurring revenue, helping 1,100 companies get deals signed. Again, with the CEO, his name is Samir. You have that to look forward to tomorrow morning. What is going on, guys? Nathan Latka here. Our guest this morning is Dinesh Kundanjata. He is a founder, mentor, speaker, and above all else, an entrepreneur. He encourages founders to ask the right questions, navigate challenging decisions, and finding the tough answers that are sometimes difficult to face. He's bought, built, sold, led, or, and or invested in over 13 companies. He really knows what it takes to transform a business. We're going to dive in today. Dinesh, are you ready to take us to the top? Let's go. All right. You're one of those guys that does so much. If we don't do a good job by the end of this interview, people still won't know what your main focus is or what you do. So let's try and focus. What's like the number one thing you do? Support entrepreneurs. Okay. That's what I do. And how do you use uh, that to generate revenue, whether it's equity investments or trainings? How do you make money? I make money by investing in capital gains um, against those investments in the form of either an exit through public markets or um, acquisition by a strategic or financial partner. Uh, the other ways I make money is by actually operating. That's the, that's the number one way I make money. Um, I also, you know, do some consulting work and board work, um, but that's mostly just um, that's just mostly to support the entrepreneurs and you know put put a dollar beside it so that people don't ignore what I say. <laughs> <laughs> what, do, what do people put me? This is something that's interesting that a lot of people wouldn't know about unless they had the chance to listen uh, visit an episode like this uh, for board seat. What do people typically compensate for that? Is it a couple grand per year? Or is it thirty, forty grand yeah, per? Yeah, it depends on your structure. You can either get paid per meeting, and it depends on whether you're an independent director or not. Independent directors are typically paid for their time, um, and then, um, but if you're if you're a board member in a private company, uh, you might have more responsibilities, some more operational responsibilities. So that might be a retainer. Uh, usually, it's a small retainer along with some ex some of some equity position. Okay. Got what is this word? You define small retainer. Four or five grand? What? Yeah, I guess small is all relative. Um, so, you know, a thousand to five thousand bucks uh, a month. Okay. Um, and you know, if you think about it, what you have to do is whatever you're getting paid, you have to generate 10 to 20 times that in value. Got Otherwise, it. you won't keep you won't keep your seat. So if you can't, if you're getting paid a thousand bucks a month, you better be able to generate twenty thousand dollars in either cost savings or revenue growth. Um and so, you know, most board guys are getting paid that plus maybe options in the range of, you know, thousands or even hundreds of thousands. So you might pay a board member a, a couple of hundred grand over a year. So they have to generate, you know, between two, the three, retainer plus the options in my multiple exactly. times exercise That's price. Millions of dollars in value. Yep. Yep. Very cool. Um, and let's just sum that total up. So 2015, what was kind of the total you made that were not via, you know, capital gains or exits? Um, I'm an accredited investor, so north of 300k. Okay, north of and define what accredited accredited investor means for the audience. 
accredited investors are investors that have net assets greater than $5 million, um, have um, earning in the last two years of greater than, it depends by market, but I think $200,000, if it's a single individual, if it's a family, it's three hundred. dollars um, And there's a few other things, but the idea is, is that you are accredited you you are accredited to take part in highly risky and speculative transactions. Yep. And uh, do the, does the five million in net assets does it have to be kind of liquid or can it be real estate or things like that? I think it can be anything. I I don't know. I'm not a, a lawyer, but I I believe it's it's you know it's kind of your personal balance sheet. Got it. Very cool. Okay, let's let's flip to the other side, which is where you're making money. Uh, do you have a fund you invest out of, or is it just personal fine you know personal money? It's personal money. So I, I've been very fortunate and blessed to do uh, a bunch of startups. Some have failed. Uh, a couple have been fairly successful. So the result is, is I try to reinvest those gains back in private companies. Um, and I do to the tune of two a year. I probably see around 20 deals a year of which I would invest in two. Um, and a bunch of the other ones I continue to advise. So you see uh, 20 deals, you invest in two. About how much are you investing in each company? between 75 and 150 K depending on what's there. And you know, it's small, it's small money, I guess in some ways. But your first um, end usually, right? Yeah. And I'm, I'm really early. I'm pre series a often precede. And what I'm trying to do there is take my capital and amplify it with my network and my experience. So you need to take 75 K worth of capital, but then I'm working with you. I'm putting a day into your business and a day a week. And the goal would be for six to nine months to work with you to really scale that up and then bring a deterministic business model to an institutional investor with upside so that they could go in and get you your one to two to three million um, in your, you know, your, your seed round or your series A. And then I can step away, hire my, my fire myself, hire my replacement. And you guys can go, the founder can go build hopefully a, you know, an eight figure business. I want to talk more about that in a second, but first uh, tell us about your most spectacular fail with the biggest explosion, the, the hottest flames, what just blew up in your face the worst? Well, that would be right after I, uh, I kind of, I worked and sold the first company in the late nineties. Um, and we got what? precise software technologies as part of a, te a technical team there that did real time operating systems. Okay. Um, and you know, we got acquired by a semiconductor vendor and then went public on the London stock exchange. And then I left that firm and decided to try to start something out on my own and, um, proceeded to, uh, get sued by my previous company. Was that um, support.ca? No, no, that was in between um, and got sued by my previous company. What else happened? So um, Precise sued I, you. Yeah. Well, well the, the person that acquired uh, Precise sued me. Non-compete uh, or what? What's that? Non-compete and intellectual property infringement. Uh, Interesting. Uh, both of which, you know, frankly, I, I, I didn't believe I was doing. But Did you kick their <laughs> ass? Well, it's the funny thing I learned about that process is it doesn't matter if you're right or wrong. No, totally. um, it just it, it just puts you on the sidelines. And so I ended up spending hundreds of thousands of dollars in legal battles um, instead of building my company. And the result of that was my company went bankrupt. And Did you win? Not bankrupt. I just it, it there were just there was it wasn't going to stick. So. So, yeah, so that was a pretty big fail and it cost me a ton of money. And the how much total would you say it cost you like 600, oh. 700 grand? Well, there were hundreds of thousands in just direct losses. And then the fact was it was 2001. And so the market tanked. So all of my paper assets went to next to zero. Ooh. So yeah, I, like I mentioned to, on another interview, I was ended up in my, uh, in my parents' basement back in the same bed I slept in when I was 14 years old. <laughs> 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 I think as fails go, that's pretty spectacular. Yeah, the <laughs> sheets are still like stained from when you like you wet the bed. No, just kidding, right? I get it. A fourteen year old. Yeah, yeah. Tell tell us about the most. Okay, so let's switch now. Tell us about the most spectacular success. Well, the most spectacular. I mean, I would say it's yes yet to come. Let me you know tongue and cheek it a little yeah, bit. That was smart <laughs> uh, because I got a lot of road left to left to cross. How old are you? I am forty one. Yeah, so I've, got, I've still got some plenty of time, but I've had some good ones. The last. Um, the one I guess I'm most proud of recently is um, MyFax, which is Prototype B Solutions. Mm -hmm. We we really that was an interesting business. We um, had to pivot. We had a successful business around 10 million um, that the founders had before I joined, and you know they decided to run that you know, turn that business off, um, and because they it was yeah. 
um, it was a highly, uh, it was in a very uh, litigious space. Sure. And so they had to completely pivot the business um, while their revenue was shrinking by, you know, 30, 40% um, a year. Uh, and so it, it coming in and then working with the founders and then um, building out a, a sales and marketing organization and then taking the revenue to, to basically zero and then growing it all the way back up to $80 million in software as a service um, just through you know, yeah, ARR, $80 million a year in annual revenue, um, uh, monthly revenue rather. Um, so Wait, sorry, sorry, uh, 80, million, you did 80 million a month or annual? So that eighty million is the annual recurring divided revenue. 12, yeah. Okay. So we divide by twelve to get MRR. To get MRR. That's yes. right. So it was subscription business, and you know that we did in six years, which is you know a pretty fast. It was pretty fast paced. Um, the result of a great team, a great product. Did they incentivize you, Dinesh? With like with? Uh, I mean, it sounds like you joined after they kind of got the initial thing off the off the ground. What what? How much equity did they give you? I had a, a, a fair, not, I mean, in the a couple of percent range. Is it like um, three, four, five percent? Yeah, that's significant. Okay. So it was, it was enough to set me up. Um, and then since then, um, I've been, you know, doing, I'd always been doing some investing. I've done a lot of real estate. Oh. Um, I'm also currently, uh, I, I, I'm part of another services company called Macadamian Technologies. And that's kind of my thing is I, I kind of get in at the three, four, five percent level um, and then, you know, help really scale that up to uh, through those three things, capital, network and expertise to turn you know, get a 10x return. Let's let's actually get more specific, though, about your position in Protus IP Solutions, which is the one that, that you said was your most spectacular. So let's say you get five percent, maybe it was a little less, three, four, whatever. Five, let's say five. Percent. I'm reading off your LinkedIn profile. You scaled revenues to multiple eight figures with over 50,000 users. In 2010, it was acquired by J2 Global Communications for 213 million bucks in cash. Is that all right? Yep, that's all right. Yeah, so you guys can do the math, right? 213 million bucks in cash at 5%, right? You may be, you know, somewhere between, you know, seven and 10 million bucks is potentially what Dinesh took home from that. And Dinesh, you've kind of used that success to do everything else. Yeah. And, you know, that's that's not it. I've also done real estate and a bunch of other things. The, the thing that people don't recognize is you lose a lot more than you win. Um, and so it's really about um, making. Yeah, taking a lot of swings and you're going to you're going to blow a lot of money in the process. My wife makes the joke. I've lost more money than um, I don't think she's joking. I think she's kind of. <laughs> making commentary on my investing abilities. But, you know, the fact is I've lost a lot more money than some folks make in their lifetime. And that's OK, because, you know, you can you can if you get a few over the fence, um, it can make up all the difference. Mm -hmm. What is the uh, let's switch back to your investing. Is there a particular business model you like? Like, do you stick to B2B SaaS? B2B as much as possible. Um, SaaS, I love because I know it and I have, um, you know, I've lived in the trenches and I know what makes it successful and what's going to fail. Technology, almost always it's a technology company. I've done a couple of placements, small placements in media companies that were selling to technology. My investing philosophy is very simple, right? It's do what you know and is passionate and where your network and your expertise can bring leverage to your money. Are you, uh, what's your favorite current investment that is a B2B SaaS company? That I've personally invested uh -huh. in? Yep. Well, the big one that I'm working on now is uh, Patriot One Technologies. Um, uh, it's a, a publicly traded company. It just went public uh, on the TSX-V uh, last uh, a week and a half ago. So how are you involved uh, in that? I am president and chief technology officer. Okay. And were you, did they recruit you kind of after you went public or part of the road show or were you in way before that? I was in way before when at the conception stage. Got it. So the same model as your other one where you have a couple percentage points. Oh, yeah. Very cool. So yeah, you're, I mean, you're, you're actually, I mean, you said you kind of get in there, you operate and then you replace yourself. This one though, I mean, you got an early, it sounds like you're sticking with it through IPO as in a CTO role. Yeah, this one, just because um, it's a really compelling social good. So what made things different in this case is Patriot One Technologies is a concealed weapons detection system. Um, oh. And that's what it is. so it, it can when I think about legacy, um, this business could impact the future of what, you know, our families and our kids have to deal with as it relates to unlawful weapon use. Yeah. Um, in public places and for our peace officers. And that is different than, there's lots of ways to make money, frankly, but when you get when you get to a, an idea that could be meaningfully um, 
uh, impactful to society as a whole, you know, you want, you just, it becomes more of your baby than an investment. And so that's why I'm more involved because I'm very passionate about the potential of the technology. And I want to make sure that I'm, that it can, it's going to get executed effectively and it's going to be a billion dollar company. Dinesh makes a lot of sense. Where is the best place for people to connect with you online if they want to follow you as you keep building these companies? Uh, you can get a hold of me at Dinesh K at work uh, I, on Twitter. Uh, I have a clarity.fm profile. I don't know if you know much about that platform, yep, Martel, um, yep. but it's, yep, exactly. And um, so Dinesh K at work, front slash, oh, sorry, clarity.fm front slash Dinesh K at work. You can get a hold of me there. I'm trying to raise money for charity. So if you uh, want to get some info on investing, scaling companies, even public markets, I'm happy to talk to you. Um, the money gets 100% of the um, the fee uh, gets donated to charity, so it's an opportunity for people to do a little bit of good and get some information. If you're listening right now and you do anything related to sales or you're a CEO or anything like that, you're probably using something like Yesware or Salesforce or Tout App or something like that to help your sales team close more deals, maybe Boomerang and Gmail. You've got to look at something that I just bought. I use this company inside my inbox to sell Heyo.com. I use it now to get podcast sponsors and all kinds of things. It helps me schedule emails to be sent later, do open tracking, set reminders, and to do and set up auto follow-up sequences all in my inbox. I'm thinking about going all in on this, raising dozens of millions of dollars, 10, 20, maybe 50 million. Maybe we'll raise 50 million to take it. I can do that so easily. And then in three years, I'll be at the stock exchange and ding, 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 ding. I'll be doing the opening bell going public for two, three, four billion dollars. Tell me if you think it's doable. If you're listening right now in the sales space, go to the top inbox.com and okay, install it. And then text me and tell me what you think. Many people go in and you came out of nowhere. Your website is going so fast. How did you do it? The answer is simple. So I use HostGator. I don't know if you guys know that, but I use HostGator. And the reason I do, they have like about 4,500 free templates I can use because I don't code. They've got a great e commerce plugin. And guys, I bug the heck out of their support. They've got 24 7 support, which I love. So what I've done is I've worked with them. You guys know I make great deals. If you go to hostgator.com forward slash Nathan, you can sign up, get your own domain for 30% off and a 45-day money-back guarantee. Okay, again, I make great deals for you guys. Go to hostgator.com forward slash Nathan to grab that now. Top Tribe will link to that in the show notes at NathanLatka.com forward slash the top 518. Again, forward slash the top 518. Eight. All right, Dinesh, let's get into the famous five. These are one word answers. You ready? Yep. Number one, what's your favorite business book? Essentialism. That's a good one. Number uh, two, is there a CEO you're following or studying right now? Oh, that's a, uh, that's a great one. I mean, I, I love Steve Jobs. Yep. Number three, is there a favorite online tool you have like TopTel? Asana. That's a good one. Are you an investor? And uh, no, I wish I was. <laughs> <laughs> Number four. By the way, how critical is that? Just knowing the right and getting early access to deal flow. Really important. That's why networking is so critical. People got to see you in their deal. Yep. And that means they need to know who you are. Right. Number four. Yes or no? Do you get eight hours of sleep every night? Uh, no. Number. <laughs> <laughs> and what's your situation? Married, single? Do you have kids? I'm married with kids. How many kids? Two. Two. And are they super young or what? Uh, 12, uh, 12 and 8. Okay, so pretty young. Yeah, you yeah. got your hands full. Yeah. Uh, and how old are you, Dinesh? Uh, 41. Oh, yeah, you told me that. So last question. Take us back 21 years. What do you wish your 20-year-old self knew? Don't be the smartest guy. <laughs> Top drive. There you have it from Dinesh. Do not be the smartest guy. He's investing 75 to 150 k in pre-seed deals. He loves B2B SaaS. He had a royal, royal failure back in the day, was sued by his uh, previous company, then took an equity position early on in a company that ended up being acquired for $213 bucks. He's investing in real estate. He's having a lot of fun. Dinesh, thank you for taking us to the top. Thank you. If you enjoyed Dinesh today, go back and listen to Joseph yesterday. He's the CEO of HelloSign. They've raised $3.5 million bucks, and they have 6 million users, 47,000 of which they've converted into paying customers who all pay them to help sign their documents faster. Top Tribe, I love giving away free money. I feel like Oprah giving away cars, and I have something special for you today. 
How many of you have heard our super sharp guests talk about success they've had with Facebook and Google ads? Well, all of you listening right now, yes, if you're listening, you get $100 in free AdWords. Here's how you get it, okay? Again, thanks for listening. Get the free $100 from Google, right, when you sign up with my website host provider, HostGator. Go sign up now to get your free money, HostGator.com forward slash Nathan. Again, that's HostGator.com forward slash Nathan. Okay, Top Tribe, I'll see you bright and early tomorrow morning. And don't forget, before you listen to any other episodes, subscribe on iTunes right now for your chance to win 100 bucks every Monday.